Hey guys and welcome to Hattie Gastro. In today's video, we're going to be talking about a very interesting topic and that is onchocerciasis, which is also commonly known as river blindness. So let's get started. So what is onchocerciasis? Onchocerciasis, also commonly known as river blindness, is an infection caused by the parasitic worm called onchocerca volvulus. The parasite is transmitted through repeated bites by black flies of the genus Simulium. And the disease is called river blindness because the specific species of black fly which transmits the infection lives and breeds near fast flowing streams and rivers and because this infection also results in blindness. So from this definition of onchocerciasis, we get that it's a parasitic infection caused by the parasite called Onchocerca volvulus. And the infection actually occurs when an individual is repeatedly bitten by this black fly from the simulium species. So the parasite enters the skin through the fly bite, it migrates into the subcutaneous tissues, and in the human host, it is able to mate and produce microfilaria, and the microfilaria actually deposit themselves in the skin. And when the individual is bitten again by the simulium species of black fly, the microfilaria get ingested, it penetrates the stomach wall and migrates to the head and proboscis where the parasite can actually enter the skin again through another bite. And this is basically how the cycle continues. So now that we know what the basics of onchocerciasis is, let's take a closer look at how this disease is transmitted. So there are two main stages of this disease. We have the human stages and then the black fly stages. So initially we have the infected black fly which starts the cycle. So a black fly deposits larvae into the skin while biting and the larvae enter the wound. So the first thing we have is that bite from this black fly. And inside the skin tissue larvae develop into worms which cluster densely in the nodes. So these larvae actually infiltrate the lymph system and develop into worms and cause multiple masses to appear on the patient's body. So the adult worms mate and produce microfilaria, which are immature worms, and a female worm can produce almost 1,000 microfilaria a day. And this is basically what the microfilaria looks like. So thousands of microfilaria migrate through the skin tissue, causing a variety of symptoms. So now we have the microfilaria, which actually begin to infiltrate the patient's skin. So we'll have the presence of the skin rash, the patient becomes very itchy, and we'll have the formation of these papules which will appear on the skin. We will also have depigmentation of the skin. And in addition to the microfilaria infiltrating the skin, they actually migrate to the cornea of the eye and cause infection and inflammation there. So over time, the cornea actually becomes completely clouded and the patient may actually lose their sight altogether. And that's why this disease is called river blindness, because over a long duration of time, the patient actually develops quite severe eye disease. So that concludes the human stage of the infection. So keep in mind that the last stage of this infection involves the microfilaria being deposited into the skin. So now we have the second stage of the disease, which is the black fly stages. So now we have the black fly coming back, and the black fly feeds on the blood of the infected person and ingests the microfilaria and become infected. Another black fly becomes infected and continues the cycle. And inside the black fly's midgut, we have the microfilaria developing into the infectious larvae again. And then we have the larvae which migrates from the midgut to the black fly's proboscis, which is the point at which it actually pierces the skin. And then we have the infected black fly seeking blood meal from a host. And then we have the cycle continuing. So again, when the human is bitten, we have the larvae which is deposited into the skin and the cycle continues. So humans get infected and then the black flies become infected and so forth. So now let's explore some of the signs and symptoms in more detail. So as we mentioned in the slide before, we have skin inflammation in this patient that is very itchy and we have the formations of papules on the skin. And this is what the papular rash looks like and that is due to the deposits of microfilaria in the skin. So we will also have nodules on the skin, and that is the subcutaneous nodules or bumps. We can have scarred, saggy, or drooping areas of skin. We can have patchy skin depigmentation, so it's also called leopard skin. We have lymph node inflammation, which is lymphadenitis. 
and we have eye or ocular lesions with intense eye itching, redness and swelling. And we will also have visual problems with visual impairment and or the inability to distinguish certain colors and partial or complete blindness. The patients will also have eosinophilia, which means a high levels of eosinophils in the blood. And this is the body's general response to a parasitic infection. They'll have high levels of eosinophils, which are white blood cells, which will try to fight the infection. And something specific to this disease is something called soda. And this is a term that is used to describe the severe itching and skin discoloration, which is the darkening, and is often confined to one limb and can be found in patients with onchocerosis. So how can one go about diagnosing onchocerosis? So the definitive diagnosis is simply done by seeing the adult worms in the excised skin nodules, eye lesions, or by finding microfilaria in skin shavings or punch biopsies of the skin. So we actually take little pieces of the skin where we can look for the adult worm or for the microfilaria. And in addition to this, an immunological test for the antibodies developed against the parasites early in the infection is useful to determine if a person is infected before some microfilaria are detectable. So we can also do a blood test and it'll show high levels of eosinophils, but we can also test for specific antibodies that the bodies produce against the onchocerosis parasites. And finally, let's talk about the treatment of onchocerosis. So the treatment of this infection is done by giving the patient ivermectin, which is an antiparasitic drug once or twice per year for about 10 to 15 years, which is the actual lifespan of the adult worms. This antiparasitic drug is effective in killing the microfilaria, but does not kill all the adult worms. And the mature worms may remain alive for 10 to 15 years in the patient. And that's why the treatment is actually carried out over the course of these 10 to 15 years. And that brings us to the end of this presentation of Oncocerisis. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you found the presentation very interesting and informative. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe and share. And please make sure you turn on your bell notifications so you'll be notified every time we have a new upload. If you'd like to download a copy of this presentation, you may do so by clicking the link in the description. Take care and bye for now.